Hello friends, Doug Fink, 16 time Microsoft MVP. I'm going to show you how to use GitHub Copilot edits and we're going to go from using from doing test driven development to generating code using AI. If you like what you see, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you see other videos more coming. Let's go. Here you see I'm going to work with Pester, which is a testing framework for PowerShell. And what I'm showing you here can work with any testing framework. So if you're working in C Sharp or JavaScript or Java, pick your favorite uh, testing framework, start writing tests, and then use GitHub Copilot Edit to uh, actually generate the code for you. So let's give it a try. So up top, you can see that this is um, a way to open up chats, and I'm going to drop this down, and I'm going to say open Copilot edits, and we should get a window to the right. And here is our little Copilot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some context. It's very important when you're dealing with AI that you have context, you know the models you're dealing with, and you have your prompts. If you can triangulate those three, you get tr tremendous results out of AI. So I'm going to go over here and I can actually drag greets or greet.test.ps1, drag it down here in my working set. Now that be this becomes, this file content becomes part of the context, it goes up to the model. Down here, if I drop this down, I can pick a model and what's available today in GitHub Copilot are four models, Claude GPT-4, 01 and 01 Mini, those are in preview. More are coming. Um, right now I'm gonna go with 4.0. We're gonna leave the reasoning models for another time, another video. I'm gonna create a prompt, the function in a new file. Let's just start with that. And here we see it says greet.ps1, create a new file with the greet function. So it's doing what they call a planning step. And then it will use reflection to figure out, did it do it right? Okay, so a couple of things. It created greet.ps1. Here it is. And it created a, a function called greet. And um, I can now go through the different changes that happened. Here I have a question mark of one down here. So it's, just, it's just toggling through the that file. The one of one shows that this was what it created, and I can choose to accept that or I can discard it. Uh, so nothing is permanent when, when this happens. It'll give you the opportunity to discard particular changes if you don't like them or agree with them. All right, interesting. So let's take this part a little further. I'm gonna drag this off to the side. Um, so it created a greet function, and on its own it said, okay, I'm gonna give you a parameter block. I'm gonna give you a name parameter and I'm gonna type it as a string, and then I'm gonna return hello world, okay? So, interesting. And I'm gonna take this a step further. Now I'm gonna add a test. So that's pretty good for just guessing that I wanna a, a, a test greet. But let's add um, a test and say, the result is equal to invoke hyphen greet, so that's a verb noun in PowerShell. You can put any function in there that you'd like. If you wanted to put a C-sharp function in there, or an F-sharp, or Scala, or Ruby, or Python. Um, and you can name the function, and then I'm telling it what I think or what I want it to return, hello world. And I'm going to now, instead of saying generate the function in a new file, I'm going to go back to the original generate the function and see if it takes the new greet file and uses that as context and updates the existing function. If not, we can discard and try again. Anyway, let's run it. So again, it gives us the plan interesting and uh, we can either accept or discard and it showed that it ch defaulted the name to world which is good because I wanted to be hello world but it gave me a set alias uh, that's good bad and different I'm gonna say accept and what I'm gonna do is just for now and I would don't recommend this I wouldn't I don't I'd try not to edit not that editing is bad but I prefer just to get my muscle built in terms of doing co-pilot edits and using AI to generate the code. But for the demo, I'm just gonna copy and paste the invoke uh, greet as the function name. 
All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, let's say I didn't want to, you know, it already gave me what I wanted, but we'll do it again. I'm going to create the test for the parameter name. And I'm going to add a third test. And here I'm going to say, should return high world. Um, and now I want to be able to have a parameter called greeting that takes a variable and uh, a name world so that it can come back high world. That way I can parameterize that when I use it. So let's go again and I'm just going to say generate the function. It gives me the plan. Update the invoke greet to accept an additional greeting parameter. And I can see the diff on that, that it's added um, a comma after world, added another parameter greeting, and it updated the return. Looks good. And I'm going to accept it. Now, what's really cool here is, is that it actually did what I wanted. Um, Show me what it changed. And, but what I want to do is I want to take out the greeting and instead of saying putting it at the end, I want to put it at the beginning. So now I can say invoke hyphen greeting hyphen name so that in PowerShell I can say invoke greet space hello space PowerShell. And I can it's more readable that way. And I'm going to do it one more time with the parameters in the correct order. So we're just going to give it a little more context, see if we get a better. And I'm going to accept it. And that looks much better. So it needed a little more context. It, it looked at everything and said, hey, I'm good to go. And it didn't uh, at, at first want to say respect what the test was, which is perfectly fine. We're going to take it one last step. And now what I want to do is when I add this test, I want to be able to add an exclamation point at the end of the greeting. But I don't want to do it myself. I just want to be able to say, add a, a flag and say hyphen exclamation. All right. So let's see if it adds, what I'm looking for it to do is add a switch parameter to the param block. I'm going to up arrow, and I'm gonna not say in the correct order because the greeting and the name are, are reversed again in, in this test, but I'm just gonna say update params. Let's see if we just get the exclamation or not. And there you go. So not only did it keep everything the same, in the proper order, but it added the comma after name and it in included the exclamation as a switch. Let's hit the accept and look at this code. So now we have greeting that we can override, name we can override, and they're defaulted. Um, there's a switch statement for exclamation where we can say hyphen exclamation or not, which defaults to false. Line seven says it builds out the message greeting comma name and it checks to see if exclamation was set. If so, it appends hyphen the, the bang to the end of the message and returns it. Awesome. So I know lots of people may be watching this and saying, oh, that's just a simple, you know, typical hello world type um, simple example. You can get very complex with this. And the cool part is, is that you can start from by thinking through your tests and the parameters that you want. Um, to generate the code. And then you've done more than double the, you've solved more than double the work in half the time. Why? Because you now have a test that proves that your code works and AI has generated that. And in videos to come, I'll show you from this point where we can have it come up and say, hey, AI, add more tests to test out the function, make sure it works, and then update the code appropriately to handle the tests um, for what we want to do. Um, the other cool part is if I went to something like an O1 preview and started using the reasoning model, I can get really complex in my tests. I can have a really complex PS1 file or whatever language you're working in. So it could actually figure out from the test and from the actual code what needs to get done. Uh, those are more videos. Hope you like what you saw. Stay curious.